what does anxiety mean in Arabic? Mm. Do you know? No, what does it mean? I, I, maybe? Qalaq, or qalaq. Atirab al-qalaq, apparently. I googled it. But qalaq, like, what are you going to go? Okay, so how do you put qalaq in a sentence to tell your mom? Where are you going to go? Especially, like, my mom, I speak Arabic to her. I don't know. Some people speak English to their parents, but I speak Arabic. What, are you going to sit down with your mom and be like, Mama, ana, I'm qalaq right now. I'm qalaqing. Yo, welcome to the Yalla Let's Talk show. And we got with us today, Mr. Safe Shawaf. So for the people who don't know Mr. Safe, which you likely know him, he has over 5 million followers on TikTok. A man who made this world laugh would make me laugh segment. He was featured by none other than pop icon Nancy Ajram in one of her videos. And this man is not afraid to be vulnerable and he showcases his vulnerable side and tells people about his anxiety and growing from depression. I am so grateful that this human is sitting right across me and I'm grateful to call this guy one of my close friends. So welcome, Safe. Awesome. Thank you for that introduction. And like you said, we're basically friends. So uh, this won't be any other, won't be any different than the conversations that we have all the time. So it's kind of exciting to do this with you. My man. So tell us how you started Make Me Laugh and got the whole entire world laughing with you. Um, honestly, I was on TikTok scrolling, um, doing my research. I don't really consume TikTok much, but when I'm researching, I consume it a lot. Uh, mm -hmm. But then I, I landed on a video and it was, somebody did make me laugh um, and was giving people money if they made them laugh. And I saw that one video. Uh, it was a, a one-off, like, uh, make me laugh video. But then I'm like, oh, this is a really cool concept. And I feel like, you know, I can take this and do something big with it. So um, yeah, that's, that's where it came from. I got inspiration from TikTok and then um, I went out and uh, bought a board, uh, printed, make me laugh on it. And it was $10 first, it wasn't 20. And I'm like, let me go try my luck. And I love to talk to people in public and I love the uh, ability to like connect with random people on the streets and just, you know, make new friends and stuff like that. So I'm like, yo, this would be fun and it would make really good content. And I know that people are gonna love it. So I went with it. I love that. And I love the fact that you mentioned you researched and it was, it's a very cool concept because people don't think of like going on TikTok and doing the research. And I remember like us traveling once and we were I think in Punta Cana and I, re I remember we were like, okay, I need to go and step out and do some research. And that was the first time I'm like, oh, content creators do a lot of research to see what is trending. And can you walk us through um, that process. Like what, what is content creation research? Absolutely. I think it's like, um, a, a, a part of the whole process that people tend to like, you know, gear away from and yeah. not give it importance. But I think it's the most important step. Um, if you're going to be on a platform, um, you better like do your research, just like if you're going to start a product, like if you're going to go and start a business, uh, to make cups, you, sh you should go to Walmart. You should go to uh, the um, stores that sell these cups, you know, um, home, homeware, um, kitchenware stores and see all the different cups and qualities and the prices and, and you know, maybe even dig into like where they're being bought, uh, what, what, what's the sources, right? So you can make a good cup that's different, unique and special mm -hmm. um, uh, with the right price, right? So same thing with TikTok. If you're gonna post videos on that platform or any other platform, you should do the research and see what's doing well, what's not doing well, what can you uh, take and do better? What can you create that's unique, different? How can you get inspired? So I think it's a really important sp step that people are like not doing. Yeah, and what I appreciate about what you just said right now is that you can take a concept and put your own twist on it, right? It's you get inspired and you, execute and you're staying consistent and you're paying attention to the the trends and and all of that what i also find very fascinating about you safe and you know this but maybe they don't know this is that i was a fan of safe show off long <laughs> ago back when not we anymore were, well i'm still a huge fan i'm one of your biggest fans exactly. but like i before we became friends you know we yeah were you like, were yeah i was like i'd watch him on youtube i'd be like oh what is this guy doing like you had a segment called uh that Arab life and and then and you start off in Vine 
And then you kind of took a break and went into sales. And then during the pandemic, boom, you got back. And I wanted to know, and I feel like a lot of people are curious, what did you learn during that hiatus, like during that break? Yes, uh, you did mention that um, I was on YouTube and Vine. Um, yeah, that was a while ago. Um, and uh, I was doing well on YouTube. I got up to 50,000 subs and my videos were popping, um, you know, half a million views, stuff like that. It was, it was doing really well. And then I got on Vine um, and I was uh, also enjoying that. And then they deleted it. Um, but that wasn't the reason why I stopped. I stopped, um, I stopped making content um, because I kind of lost motivation and I kind of, my priorities shifted. Um, it was like, you know, when you, when you want to do something and you want to do it well, you want to, like, you really need to want it badly. Uh, and if uh, the moment it's less than I want it so bad, then it's not going to work. So I didn't want it so bad. It was like, it would be nice to, to have it. So I think that mo motivation and the shift of my priorities led to me being like, you know what? I don't need to do this. And then I started thinking about all the negatives of being famous and all the negatives of posting uh, online. Like, oh, it's bad for mental health. Oh, it's this. I started convincing myself that, no, I don't need this. And I stopped. So during that time, to, to get to your question, um, how important it is, right? That's what you're asking. I think it was really important. Um, I think it was, now I know it's a blessing. Before it was like, ah, uh, what would have happened if I continued? But now it's like, I actually think it was a really good part uh, um, in, in what, how I succeeded today because I was able to like step back and, you know, take a break from it and reevaluate what I really want. And also I went on a journey of self-discovery and self, um, you know, understanding who I am, which I didn't know back then. And um, that journey of like figuring myself out was a major key in like me being able to hop back on it today and being like, this is what I want. And this is what I was meant to do. Um, and, and, and I want it badly. So that time was very essential. And I think, you know, that people should consider taking that time if they do need it for self discovery. And, and I read a lot of books during that time. I, I traveled and, and, and so but I also worked jobs that I didn't like. So, okay, we'll get to the jobs in a, in a minute. Um, you said a lot of excellent things. You've mentioned about taking a, a break and reflecting, and you took a break for your mental health and use that time to really reflect on what are the pros and cons. Uh, I'm curious, was there a specific reason why uh, you felt like you wanted to take that break, like when it comes to the mental health, or is it just uh, just out of nowhere, you're like, I'm just taking a break. Um, it was never a break. It was more of like a, a quit. I quit. It was never like, oh, I'll come back. Um, at the beginning, it was, it was completely quit. But as the time passed and and I missed it and realized mm. that, the, no, I kind of like it. I started saying that I will, I will go back. Uh, but um, it was it was the lack of motivation. Yeah. It was me getting involved in... Um, you know, uh, caring more about like having fun and partying and, you know, going out and stuff like that, hanging out with friends. I was like uh, really concerned about like making friends and like, you know, hanging out with them more than So that's than when you mean by your priorities changed. Like exactly. So my priorities b became more of like hanging out with friends, you know, yeah, uh, and going out with friends and um, stuff like that. But it wasn't like, Doing, doing well with what I love to do, which was content creation. I love that. And I think it's, um, it goes back to what you're saying about different priorities. And I think it's normal when for, you know, for young people to change what they want. Sometimes they're like, you know what? I want to explore other things or I want to do this. I want to travel. And then you circled back. And uh, what made you go back into social media? Okay, I think it was... It, it's a lot of things that led to that. Like uh, the whole the whole break, uh, as we call it. Um, I was reading a lot of books. Yeah, and I say this a lot, and I tell people um, when they ask me, 
you know, any question, like, how can I do better than this? What can I, how can I succeed on TikTok and, or, or, or something like that? I'm like, do you read? Like, do you, do you, have you read a book recently? Most of them haven't. I'm a huge advocate of reading books. And I know a lot of people might listen to this and like, oh, reading, like, uh, it's not a big deal. It doesn't, no, it's actually, it changed my life. It literally got me to where I am today, the books that I read. And I've read almost 25 books um, and I, I would finish a book in two, three days. And the first book that I yeah. read was the hardest book. What was the book? Um, the the first book that oh, so I you, read. When you meant the hardest, you meant like the, just no. It was hardest. Sorry, it okay, was, I get what you're saying. It was like, hardest it was like to get thing. through. Yeah, because I told myself like everybody uh, uh, yeah. listening right now is everybody's listening right now. Probably like oh, I can't read. Yeah, I'm not a person that reads. And by the way, when I say read, I listen. Just like this podcast that people mm -hmm. are listening to, I listen to Audible books. But I think it's the same thing. So you're consuming I did, information. I agree. Exactly. So. so what I did is I told myself I will not. Mm -hmm not finish this book. I will not, not finish this book. Do you get what I mean? I was like, I need to prove to myself that I can finish this book. And it's, it's actually a very um, a strong way for you to start liking reading books is to just finish one. Like don't, don't stop halfway, like read it to the credits, like I feel keep like a, going. I feel like a lot of parents are gonna be watching this and taking that clip and being like, listen, you see that Samantha? Yeah. You see that yeah. Abdullah, you gotta watch it. <laughs> yeah. Watch safe, <laughs> cause it's true. Uh, it is. You know, like uh, you learn through knowledge and one quote I always remember, uh, it's like, you can't really pick who are gonna be your, you know, your parents or your family who can sh pass on that knowledge, but you have teachers and they're in the books that you read. They can provide you so many different information and so much different perspective. And exactly, like, yeah. like we, have, we have access to like these books that contain all this information knowledge of people who have done this before and have this information and we're choosing not to read it. It's just, it blows my mind that people don't read enough. And um, like, you know, like, like you said, you have access to these things and, and people who have done these things and, and experienced these things mm -hmm. for us. So we don't have to experience them. All we have to do is Facts. read it. Facts. So that's one thing, really reading books. Um, and I owe it to books uh, a lot. Um, so- Before uh, you go on to the next thing, yeah. you gotta tell us like, what's your favorite book and what's a book that everyone needs to listen to? Okay, so- Or read. <laughs> I think you should read Loving What Is by Byron Katie. Okay, tell us a little more about the book. Okay, so Loving What Is is a book uh, by Byron Katie. This author uh, was literally um, out in a mental asylum, like strapped up, like mm -hmm, that's mm -hmm. like the lowest of low. When you're at a mental asylum, strapped up because you don't want to hurt, they don't want you to hurt yourself because you've mentally gotten insane. She was on the floor laying down sick in the head and then she starts laughing all of a sudden and she was laughing because she came to a realization she was like what i'm thinking isn't true like all these thoughts are they true she's like no and then that realization led to the book that she wrote loving what is and she talks about it and now she shares it with uh like she goes on stage and talks to hundreds of people is that whenever you have a negative thought, most of the time, I'm not gonna say 100%, but I'm gonna say 99.9% .9 of the time, if it's a negative thought, it's false. For example, my friends don't like me. And you dwell on it. My friends don't like me. My friends don't like me, mm -hmm. my friends. And you believe it. And, and you spend a whole day thinking my friends don't like me. But if you just pause for a moment and analyze that thought mm -hmm. and, and, and ask yourself, is it true? My friends don't like me, is it true? No, is it like gravity? Like if, if I drop this cup, it will fall. But my friends don't like me, it's not, a, it's not true. So once you realize that my thought right now that I'm thinking isn't true, you take control of it. You take control of your mind because you're, you're, you're in control now, mm -hmm. not your brain, not your ego. And then you, the next step is to ask yourself, how do you feel when you think that thought? I feel terrible. And then you ask yourself, who would I be without that thought? If I had the thought of my friends like me, how would you feel? You'd feel great. So if the first thought isn't true and the second thought, who knows, 
Why not let, get, let go of that thought that isn't true anyways and just adapt that new thought that my friends like me. And then when you have that thought, my friends like me, automatically the world will like you, the friends will like you, and you will see the world in a different way. So the book basically tells you, analyze your thoughts. Question every thought that you have, especially if it's negative. What I appreciate about what you just said right now is that it's a lot of it is mindfulness as well. It's kind of like detaching yourself and seeing yourself from another perspective, kind of like that third person and analyzing and reflecting. Exactly. Am I correct? You're correct. And a lot of people are like, you ask them, who are you? Like if I told you, Hani, who, who are you? I'm like, I'm you Hani. Say? Okay, who, but who are you? I'd say, Ed, no, that's the thing. No, tell me who you are. Well, I would say I'm Hani. I happen to, you know, be a lawyer, but it oh, also happened. Go. But that's the thing. That's one pa aspect, part of my identity, right? But it's not just that, but it's like one thing. Exactly. So th this, is, this is why I wanted to ask you that question because people start listening. I am Hani, I'm a lawyer. Um, I do a podcast. I have a, a page called Yalla Let's Talk and this, this and that. They start listing their ego stuff. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then they, they attach to that as if it's them. But really that's not who you are. Who you are is greater than that. So You're not your ego. Let's You're, flip that question. Yeah. Who is safe? Uh, who is safe? Okay, great. <laughs> um, Harder than you think. Um, I, uh, so this is how I see it. I, um, I am life experiencing itself through safe. I love that. It's an experience. Yeah, I am life experiencing itself through safe. So now it, it's, 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 I'm not, I'm, I'm not just safe that likes to make videos. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm life, I, I need to exist as safe for the things that I am to happen. So now you're not just a random person with these things that you like and stuff. Mm -hmm. You're an essential part of life. Like Hani needs to exist for Hani to be here. For, for a Hani to, yeah. uh, like for a Hani to be available in life, there needs to mm -hmm. be a Hani, right? You know what I remember? So we were watching Netflix once and uh, we were watching Elon Musk, the documentary. And you just stopped in the documentary and you're like, I'm happy to be experiencing Elon Musk through or like life through Elon Musk or life is, I don't know what you said. Okay, but that's just too deep me. for this podcast. I know, but that tripped, <laughs> that tripped me out yeah. for like a whole month. I was yeah. like, what did he mean by, yeah, that's, by this? But do you mind like elaborating a little more? Okay, so, <laughs> so I, um, there's another book that I read. It's called The Power of Now. It yeah. also talks about this uh, in more detail. You guys can read it. But it's really, it means, it, it talks a lot about like how, you know, you're not just, you know, it's, it takes you a step back and, and makes you realize yeah. that you are a part of everything and you're, you, you know, you're everything basically. Like, so bake, you know, like right now, uh, you know what, this is a little yeah. bit too deep for this podcast. Okay. Um, uh, but I do, I do encourage uh, if you want to know more about what I'm speaking of, mm -hmm. read the power of now. Um, and if you want to learn how to stop your negative thoughts, um, read Loving What Is. Those two books are my top. Amazing. Loving What Is and The book, Power of Now. The Power of Now. So book recommendations by Mr. Saif Shawaf. And so Saif, you've also, uh, and you speak very candidly and openly about this. Uh, you've gone through depression and anxiety and you've grew from it. Uh, my question to you is, what makes you want to speak about that subject to your followers, your community, so can you tell us a little more? Okay, so um, I actually recently started, uh, I say recently, but it was like a few months ago when I was in Dubai, I started, um, I was going through like anxiety. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Usually when I go through anxiety, I just don't talk about it. I don't post. Um, I just deal with it by myself, right? Or, or I call a friend, obviously. But I don't post it on social media. <laughs> Excuse me. I just burped internally. Um, so I don't post Burp as much it. as you want. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I don't post about it on social media. And, and that is the case for, um, I would say, most uh, um, people online, mm -hmm. social media influencers, artists, singers, um, anybody who's online with a, with a platform. So I was like, you know what? Um, no, this is still a part of who I am. Like, I'm not always happy and um, jumpy and energetic. I have days where I'm just in bed all day. 
Like I literally have days where I'm in bed for hours. So I asked myself like, you know, why not share that part, right? Because I'm pretty sure there's so many people experiencing this, especially today and this time, Absolutely. right? And you're being a real model by doing that. Yeah. It's not just a role model. It's like someone who's actually just authentic and showing the reality of every day. Exactly. So, and you know, I feel for people, right? And I mm-hmm. feel, and I, and I, and I feel bad for people who um, don't have the tools or the ability to speak to their parents or tell a friend even because they're they don't know how to say it. They don't know how to talk about. It, which I'll tell you a little bit more about that. Um, but I decided to post it, and and I and I and I wrote and I told people, hey guys, like I'm not having a good day today. I'm actually feeling anxious, and I I have anxiety, and I've had it for years. And the amount of um, feedback and people DMing me about their anxiety and thanking, thanking me for it and stuff made me feel like, oh, wow, like, why don't more people do that? Like, why, why don't more social media influencers and stuff like that post about their bad days? Um, but I can start with myself. I can't convince everyone else to do it, mm-hmm. but I can do it because I have access to my Instagram. You're leading by example, my man. And do you know what's funny is that or not funny, but what I find interesting is that, so people were DMing you and was, were being open about it, but I also had a lot of, uh, let's say mutual friends or people that we know, or some of the people who are you know, a part of your community and your following base, they would start coming to me and then they start opening up about their anxiety and saying like, hey, I, you know, I'm so happy Safe mentioned that. I happen to also, like I happen to be very anxious or one woman was like, I'm bipolar. So like you created like a movement of people coming out with like their mental health. And I think that in itself starts destigmatizing it. And so I generally do commend you for that. Like that's not, that's not easy at all. And I just want to uh, go back because you did talk about anxiety a lot. And a lot of people uh, kind of use the word anxiety in different shapes and forms. Like how do you define anxiety? I defined in, I define anxiety um, by the overthinking of uh, something negative, and it's usually uh, about the future. So that's how I define it. So if you are dwelling over like, um, I'm never gonna get a good job or mm-hmm. money or a boyfriend or a girlfriend or a husband or a wife or you know the future, that's anxiety. If you, if you stay in that thought and you're fearful, that's anxiety. So also physically, heart, beats faster, you get this warm feeling inside, you, you feel a little like nauseous, um, and also you have no motivation to get up from bed, for mm-hmm, example, mm-hmm. or do anything. That's how I define anxiety. Very interesting, and I, I like the definition that you put because it's uh, overthinking. There is, I think a lot of people fall into that trap and we're thinking about the future, you may get caught up. And then going back to one of the books that you mentioned earlier, The Power of Now, just being present and accepting the things around you and just absorbing. That in itself, do you feel like uh, reduces the, your anxiety levels? Absolutely, absolutely. Just understanding that right now is all that exists. Mm-hmm. Uh, so every second that passes, like literally, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, this, mm-hmm. this, this, that's it. The past, the future is just you know stuff we write about or stuff that's, it didn't even happen, so it doesn't exist. And understanding that life is too precious and these moments are too precious for you to waste, yeah. like uh, feeling that feeling, um, you know, that's one way. But, uh, you know, other tools that I use is whenever I have anxiety. So, so now, so this is what I want to say. Having anxiety is normal. Fact, it's, yeah. fi- it's fine. It's okay to yeah. feel anxious and we all feel it. Um, that's what the first step. Don't think you're weird or abnormal. Mm -hmm. That's number one, accept it and be okay with it. Number two is now you got to figure out a way to reduce the amount of time you're in anxiety because anxiety doesn't go away. You're going to have anxiety all the time, especially if you- It's it's a normal human emotion. Exactly. Especially if you went to a psychiatrist and you got diagnosed, like, you know, some people, some people genetically and tend to not have that problem, but some people are more prone to anxiety. I think I used the word correctly this time. I think so. Yeah, good finally. job. <laughs> um, so, uh, so the goal is to reduce the amount of time from like yeah. the whole day you're anxious to you know two hours to an hour to thirty minutes mm-hmm. to ten minutes to five minutes. 
So I, I am right now at the point where I've reduced the amount of time I'm in an anxious state to five minutes max. I love, I love the fact that you kind of systemized it and created a process and you're looking at it, it's like, how do I actually now minimize this thing that I have and live my life authentically and in Because it's dangerous to tell yourself that I'm gonna get rid of it completely. It's dangerous uh, to think that, mm -hmm. oh, um, I need this gone. No, it's a part of you, it's a feeling. It comes in, let it do its thing and then yeah. let it go. Like that's the whole thing. You gotta like it, let it go through the feelings, yeah, yeah. let it go. But if you resist, as soon as you resist anxiety, you get anxious more. And then when you're anxious about anxiety, about anxiety, about anxiety, you're in a... You're have, in. have you ever heard of like the difference between self-care and like self-soothing? So like, for example, let's say when I'm anxious, right? Sometimes I, I'm super anxious. I just want to, let's say, vent. And that's like self-soothing. And it just like reduces my... Uh, my anxiety or some people like, like talking turn, to a friend talking to a absolutely friends. some yeah. people eat ice cream that's me also. <laughs> but <laughs> uh but, probably yeah. not i have the option but honestly if if ice cream uh you know ice cream is not the worst thing you could do uh if it helps it helps but you're right like talking to people is a good way um my I question to you though, i call you when i'm anxious right my man yeah so so that got, helps. and i call you as well exactly yeah. But so if you, the, to, to reduce the amount of time that your anxiety, the, 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 you gotta first, um, like I said, like understand what you're thinking. Like, like there is a reason for your anxiety. It's a thought. So for you, it's not about whether you're gonna do self-soothing or self-care. I Knowing you, like I've, like what I appreciate about SAFE is that you do always look into self-care. You know, you're very healthy, you're active. Um, you read and you, you know, to take time for yourself. For you, when it comes to getting triggered with anxiety, it's more on how do I take a step back, assess, reflect, and move forward. Would that be a correct uh, yes, it's characterization? Yes, like, it's like I assess exactly my thought, like, because there's a reason behind my anxiety. I yep. think, mm -hmm. what am I mm -hmm. thinking right now? Okay, and then I start self-talking to myself switch to positive mode. Yeah. Start thinking about the grateful things that I'm grateful for. The things that are in my life that are working out. Being thankful for it. Being and thankful is huge. It's huge. It's gratitude. Gratitude. Attitude of gratitude. gratitude. Uh, you know, I start telling myself, you know, I'm, I'm like, I, some people might think, oh, this is, I don't know what that word is. When you tell yourself, I am awesome. Some uh, people. Affirmations? No, no. When, when, if you tell it like, I'm great. Like, I'm, a, I'm awesome. Like, are you conceited. Con conceited. conceited? Some people might see, say it's conceited. It's not. <laughs> or arrogant. No. You should daily tell yourself that you are awesome and you are yeah. great and you're amazing. And so you is that what you're doing right in the morning? Daily affirmations. When I get, get anxious, first thing is I, I switch to I am great. I am awesome. I come from greatness. I attract greatness. And I, and I tell these things to myself. I just boost myself. I look into the mirror. I'm like, you're doing great. You're doing great. You're doing great. You're doing great. <laughs> I, I tell myself that. So. That is one way, right? So as soon as you switch your thought to positive mode and you start telling yourself that you're good, you're good, you're good, you start shifting towards a mm -hmm. better mindset. And then also stuff like going to the gym, exercise, very important. Um, you let that steam out at the gym, you know, you're gonna raise your heart beat, might as well raise it while lifting some weights or running or swimming. I love that. And I think uh, that goes back to having a healthy lifestyle. It's, uh, Mental health goes with physical health, and we've now know that. There's also something funny that I do. Tell us, uh, <laughs> tell us. We love funny. Make so, us. Yeah, I, I tell myself to shut the f up. Okay, that's uh, that's interesting. What I do you mean it, by that? Um, so I, the negative start thought uh, starts. <laughs> like, I don't know. I'm I'm not gonna think of a good video idea, or my video is flopping, or whatever. I'm, yeah. And I'm like, shut the f up. Shut the f up. Shut the f up. And then the thought just like silences. And I'm like, I'm great. I'm awesome. I'm good. And I, so I talk to myself, you're not crazy if you, if you tame your mind. Your mind is this thing, right? You have to understand what your yeah. brain is. It is addicted to thoughts. As, you know, we, we have these words mm -hmm. that we use and we create. And so your brain is constantly just wanna, it wants to think. You can't, it's like a child though. 
You yeah. can't let the child do whatever it wants. It's going to hurt itself. You got to tame your brain just like you tame a child. Like, I remember. I, forever. Yeah. No matter how old you are. I agree. And I remember Tony Robbins even mentioned the same concept. It's like uh, for adults these days, and this is something they don't teach us enough in school. Maybe now they do, but at least when we went to school, uh, they don't teach you about how do you control your mind and I think and your that's thoughts. a huge problem. Absolutely. Yeah, I Absolutely. think that's, we're, we're learning, uh, we're, we're being taught these things and we have these books that are given to us. Um, and quite frankly, they're bullshit. And uh, we, you, yeah. the moment you mm -hmm. go on to the next uh, class or next book, hot you forget everything. Safe. I love it. This is a hot take by Safe Show Up. So like, but you're right though. Like what would be more practical in the long run? Reading The Power of Now versus like The Lord of the Flies. You know what I mean? <sighs> My God, man. The so Lord I don't know. Here's the thing. From yeah. what I've gathered from my friends who are in, in education, I do see some progress and things have changed. Um, and it's just one of those things where we do evolve. Uh, I want to just go circle back into anxiety and you posting. Uh, do you feel anxious when you start posting or when you start the content creation? Because I know for a lot of people, they do. Um, so I have an advantage over a lot of people right now on TikTok is that I did have that experience in the past and I'm a bit older. Um, so I am more- Even though everyone thinks you're 20. Exactly, people think I'm 20. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, thank you, mom and dad, for the blessed genes. Uh, but yeah, so I do still get anxious. If a video doesn't do well or if I don't have a video ready for tomorrow or something, but like, it goes back to the tools that I have. Like I stop myself from thinking that thought. I, I, I think positive thoughts. I, I go to the gym. Like I, so I, I get into that anxious state many times, sometimes multiple times a day, mm -hmm. but I try to minimize that time. And how do you differentiate between adrenaline and anxiety? Cause sometimes I like, I've seen you. Ooh, good question. So there's, so we confuse a lot of times excitement with anxiety. And a lot of times when we feel excited, we think we're anxious. But if you, if you are able to switch your mindset to like, I am excited right now, it, are, it, it, it does wonders. And then you're more productive and you're more happy. Mm -hmm. uh, so a lot of times actually these, uh, you know, knock on wood and uh, thank God, um, I've been really excited with everything. And also that feeling of excitement is, is so close to anxiety. It's like the same. And it's like, uh, you know, you have these feelings of butterflies in your stomach and you're like, I'm so excited, I'm so excited, but you also have to like <laughs> mm -hmm. tell yourself to like chill and relax. Um, so yeah, they're very similar. Anxiety and excitement are hand in hand. You know, one is better than the other. They're both, you can't really say one is better than the other. They're both feelings that you are they're feeling. They're normal feelings. They're and normal I feelings. Like, I like how you spun that, is that if you can tell yourself, I am excited, then that's, that's something. And that's a good test for people who are like trying to differentiate between the two. Um, and I just want to also go back to you being Arab, being Canadian, uh, and, and talking about mental health. Like, how would you describe that uh, experience even coming to your family and letting them know? Ooh, okay, so this is a really good question. And I think um, a lot of Arabs, young Arabs um, like myself are gonna find a hard time telling their parents. And it starts with the word. Anxiety. What does anxiety, how do you say anxiety in Arabic? Tell me. Yo, you know what's funny? The first time, first thing we did in Yellow Lost Talk, we said, what is the, what does anxiety mean in Arabic? Mm. Do you know? No, what does it mean? I, Ala, maybe? Qalaq, or al qalaq, apparently. I Googled it. But qalaq, like, what are you gonna go? Okay, so how do you put qalaq in a sentence to tell your mom? Where are you gonna go? Especially like my mom, I speak Arabic to her. I don't know, some people speak English to their parents, but I speak Arabic. What, you're gonna sit down with your mom like, Mama, Anna, I'm qalaq right now. I'm qalaqing. You're qalaqing. Like, <laughs> like it's, it's the word in itself is not. She's going to be more concerned about why is he using these, yeah. like, these the words. The <laughs> word in itself is hard to say. Like there's, yeah. there's too many qalaq in it. Like, yeah. I wish it was easier. I wish it was, there was a better um, word for it. Um, so really it starts with language. Um, so I think the word, the, the anxiety word needs to be, um, especially in the Middle Eastern world, I think it's their job to talk about it more and make that word or any other word that they want to come up with um, more and more talked about so that kids can have a, a tool, like something that they can tell their parents. 
I really like that because it does start with language. And when we start putting the right words with the right feelings, people can express themselves better. And that's why we see when people know, like can, um, can understand and appreciate the nuances in different words, they're able to better reflect what they're feeling. Exactly. So, because language is powerful. Language and if you don't is have powerful. The, if you don't have the right words, it's, that's the first problem. So, and also, yeah. like, I, I'm going to divert a little bit from, from anxiety just for a second. Also, bullying. If you're being bullied in school and you're talking Arabic mm -hmm. to your parents, what are you going to tell them? Hada <laughs> abidayetni. Abi yeah, it that's sounds what, a little like it sounds like a like, childish or, yeah. or something that you don't want to say like Abi like but but the word bully is uh tanamur tanamur is bullying Abi or ana that's yeah. what you're supposed to tell your parents I'm going through bullying but the word tanamur is not a common word that people say or no but I'm just thinking right now, like if a, uh, you know, a little Joseph went to, to his parents, would they say I'm being bullied? I feel like it's a, just a very difficult. I think it's that, easier yeah. to say in English uh, because it, the word bully and bu being bullied and bullying it's true. It's very is true. more known and and and, uh, and there's campaigns and awareness camp exactly, about it. Exactly, Even when exactly. we were growing growing Ex up, exactly. Versus that, like they kind of see it in a different perspective. So like, exactly. Someone budruba, udruba. Exactly. You know, like an so, eye for an eye, right? Terrible, terrible. There's a lot. There's a lot to work on, and and I do have have hope because there is a shift now. Yeah. There there I, there is more tanamur uh, or bullying campaigns, and and hopefully anxiety as well. But how I told my parents to get back to that. So I told them late. Like I told them about my anxiety like four years into my anxiety, and I think that's terrible because God knows what happens to my because anxiety is bad for your health as well. You know, it, it's a leading yeah. cause of heart disease. Is it actually? Is this uh, I, doctor I think, safe? Like, what is this? You can fact check me after this, but I think it is, or maybe depression, one of the two. Uh, but think about it. If you, if your body is, you know, going through that panic mode mm, mm, for mm. six hours in a day, that must have a problem. Stress is, I, um, I don't know if it's hard to, probably is heart disease, but I also for cancer disease. as well. Yeah, I think either heart disease or cancer, but it is, is very bad for your health. Um, and it's not talked about. I think you know it's even anxiety is even worse than COVID. And uh, but we we treat COVID like it's the worst thing in the world. And when anxiety right now is the pandemic, to be honest. So when I told my parents to get back to that, I just um, I got the courage. So I I sat down with my parents and I'm like, hey guys, um, I feel. What did I tell them? Hasis. And that's what I told them. My heart is uh, beating fast for no reason. Like I would be laying in bed and my heart beats fast. And there, and I didn't know what the reasons were. And I and I was like, that's how I feel. So my parents actually, and my dad especially, took it very, 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 in a very good way. My dad immediately um, understood, told me about uh, his experience with... Uh, stuff like that. Uh, obviously it's his personal stuff. I don't want to talk about that, but he, he immediately related. And then he, uh, gave me a name of a psychiatrist, uh, that apparently is related to us in some shape or form. Everyone's obviously. related to everyone these days. <laughs> yeah. But like my Arab dad yeah, told it. me about a psychiatrist. He didn't tell me to go pray. That was a pitiful, pivotal, 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 pivotal. Big words, <laughs> pivotal moments in my life when I'm like, life is good, life is okay. I'm so a lot of times it's our fault, it's not our parents' fault. You know, we tend to like uh, blame them for a lot of things, mm -hmm. but really you have to understand like they've been through a life that you weren't even there when they went through it, and they are they went through a journey and they walked footsteps that you haven't walked, so you can't really blame them. And also that is a very important moment uh, in my life is when I forgave my parents completely. I'm like, no, they did nothing wrong. And I really appreciate you empathizing because for us, like there's always this uh, like stereotype of like, or not stereotype, but it's a theme, common theme where a lot of um, ethnic or immigrant children will go and keep blaming their parents for a lot of the, the trauma that they face. And sometimes rightfully so at the same time, uh, what, you know, if I'm understanding correctly, is that 
they have, they walked a different path. They exactly. had a different education system. They lived in war-torn countries and they've come here. They already have their own trauma and they already, you know, have their own uh, journeys. So to see someone empathizing and saying, you know what, it's not, it's not just uh, my parents, There's, they're doing their best and I can forgive them and I can continue living. And I find that very beautiful. Exactly. And like we, we, you're supposed to, you know, you're, you're forgiving people. Like, and one of the main people that you should forgive is your parents. And that's a huge step that you can take to kind of let go. And letting go is really like this feeling that you, that you will feel off your shoulders. Um, I remember I, I, I like, I'll share this, uh, but I called my dad mm -hmm. um, because I did, uh, I also have to mention that, you know, uh, I, so I saw a psychiatrist um, and he diagnosed me with, um, what was it called? Uh, extreme anxiety disorder or some, I forgot what it was called. Um, and he prescribed me uh, medication. And one of them was uh, Xanax uh, for, a, for a month because you can't really go on Xanax for too long. And then it was Zoloft. So I was prescribed, so, I, uh, so you have to, people have to also understand that you know, just like you take medication for different parts of your body, your brain might also need medication. I'm not saying it's for everyone. I'm not, you should also, everybody should do their research and make a sound choice. On and go to a psychiatrist. And and get psychiatrist and also do their own research and ask friends and family. But I decided to take it. It's an organ, you know, just like your heart, just like your liver, just like your lungs, just like any part of your body that you take meds for. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. as soon as we think brain, we're like, oh no, you're taking meds for brain, you're crazy. No, it's an organ of my body. Just like if I needed a medication for my liver, I might need medication for my brain. It's an organ. Um, so I decided to take it, but I always had a, a long-term plan to eventually not take it. Uh, I think my opinion about medication for anxiety and depression is that it's a good stepping tool. Uh, especially if you're feeling really, really low, is to get yourself out of that like deep space place. Mm -hmm. um, so just that you can think straight for five, like for a little bit, so that you can make sound choices again, feel normal, and then with the help of your psychiatrist, wear yourself out of it, which is what I did, and then get yourself back on track. There was a book you actually told me to read, and I can't remember the title. It was by Oprah Winfrey and someone else. Yes, um, it is called "Why Me, Why Not Me." Uh, no, it's called "What uh, Happened to Me." What happened to me? What happened to no, me? No, what happened? What happened to you? What happened to you? Yeah. And that book talks a lot about trauma and the brain and how it's a science and all these things and. Um, and so a lot of what you're saying goes back to, it is a science, you know, this is just like how we studied our physical health and we're trying to improve, you know, people maybe try to physically get like biceps or abs, mental health, you don't need to be, you know, mentally ill or to even, you know, uh, feeling down to just keep always improving and trying to make yourself feel better. Exactly. Yeah. Before I diverted into this, um, I wanted to reach this point, you know, the journey, you know, psychiatrist, meds, getting off the meds. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I had a life coach and throughout these coaching sessions, we reached a point where I was, he was like, here, take the phone, call your dad and tell him that you forgive him. I'm like, oh my God, you're putting me on the spot here. I'm like, oh. okay, I'm gonna do it. And I was at a point where I was in a good mental state and I was progressing and I was getting better. Um, so I picked up the phone, I called my dad. I'm like, I'm like, dad, I just want to tell you that um, I've resented stuff about you because you made us travel a lot uh, around the world. Uh, and you kind of like, I felt like you forced us and that I lost a lot of friends be because, be, uh, thinking it's because of you. And I blamed you for a lot of things because we moved around a lot and I didn't want to lose my friends. And, um, but I just want to say, no, I'm actually thankful for um, all the trips that we took. It shaped me to be who I am today. And um, I forgive you, not I forgive you. I don't think you did anything wrong. You were actually doing the best that you can. And this is how you saw as a father to make a better life for us is for, by you traveling for your business um, to make us uh, 
live a life that we don't need anything and that we can live comfortably. So I just wanted to say thank you for that. Wow. And he was really happy. And I felt like a whole yeah. weight off my shoulder. And I, and I was really proud of that moment. And it was a very important uh, step in my journey. And that's incredible. You, you empathized and understood. And then you decided to just let go. Let go. Exactly. And how does it feel just even telling that story right now? Um, I don't think I've shared this story with... Uh, anyone I, it feels good I, I want people to understand these things you know to maybe uh, push them to do it and inspire them to do it like it's not don't feel ashamed or shy of these things mm -hmm. especially with your family and, and uh, the people who you know you're more the yeah. most connected with and that's very inspiring and I feel like a lot of people uh, will like look into this and reflect sometimes you know rightfully so like you know it might not be in that situation where they could you know forgive Right. But then there's sometimes in uh, scenarios and situations where um, it's just might be a perspective that you just need to reflect and change how you see it. And I generally do commend you like that's that's uh, it takes a lot of courage and a lot of vulnerability uh, to be able to do something like that. Exactly. Awesome. Thank you so much for, for saying that. And also just wanted to one more thing before we move on to the, your next question. But, um, you know, a lot of times people are like psychiatrists, uh, coach, life coach, yeah. like, uh, stuff like that. Uh, they tend to be like stigma. There's a stigma behind seeing a mm -hmm. psychiatrist. Absolutely. Or yeah. a coach or socialist. Let me just tell you this. You know that every famous artist, rich person out there who's successful probably has a couple psychiatrists. Mm -hmm. You know, it's... Uh, it's blacks. You know, that's the only word that doesn't have a, on the contrary. But I like the word in Arabic, blacks. I, 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 yeah. I agree. On Say the it, contrary, <laughs> it's it's a really good thing to have somebody mm -hmm. that you can go talk to. You know? It's like, a privilege at the same time. It's a privilege. Time. Yeah. It's not a bad thing. It's There's no stigma. If you, Hopefully, uh, you know, I feel like everybody should, you know, strive to be able to afford that kind of privilege one day to have a psychiatrist. That's awesome. I'm Absolutely. gonna go see my therapist. Great. I'm going to sit down and talk to this person for an hour and they're yeah. going to listen to me. But you know what? I it's find? awesome. But you know what I find? At least like in this part of the world and this generation, like millennials, they're always like, I'm going to go see my therapist. And it just becomes now like a flex. Like, you know, I have a therapist. Oh, it's, I, it's becoming a flex? <laughs> I, I find it. That's good. Maybe the, the, yeah. whole, uh, the whole stigma behind it will change and people will start so seeing too. it as a good thing. But do you find that when it comes to therapy, um, coming from an ethnic community, it's seen a little different than just overall Canadian society. Yeah, and, and just wanted to correct something. I said uh, seeing psychiatrists, psychiatrists is uh, different than therapists. I meant seeing therapists should not be stigmatized. But yeah, uh, well, sorry, say that question again. Do you find that coming from an ethnic community and how therapy is perceived is different than overall Canadian or North American uh, society and culture? Oh, totally, totally. Bro, I'm saying this yeah. to my Arab audience. Like this is more, way more stigmatized in the Arab world. Like you're gonna go see therapy. How, what's therapy in Arabic? It's probably a bad word. It's like tabib nafsi. Tabib and then nafsi. It, oh my God, yeah. And tabib then, nafsi, you're gonna go see a, a tabib for your nafs. Like that's intense. How does that translate? A doctor for your consciousness? I don't know, man. Like it's- You're right, it's, it sounds- It's very stigmatized. Yeah. Goes back to what you said. We need better language, better words to correlate. I know, I know, uh, you know, uh, spirituality and connection with God and prayer is great. Great. But if you are praying, saying words to God, yeah. but still feeling anxious and scared and not even, not even really believing that it's going to help, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it's not going to help. It's really your, um, it's how you're saying it and, and, you you need you like if you're gonna go on and pray and stuff like that you need to first like know how to pray know how to say these things what to mm -hmm. ask for and how to feel when you're when you're saying you need to feel optimistic while you're praying so it's not just saying the words it's yeah it's not just going through the motions you have to like really mm -hmm, deep mm -hmm. down inside feel those things and that's where therapy comes because they teach you um, how your mind works and how your thoughts work and what you need to do I hope a lot of people listening to this uh, will start opening their minds to therapy if you know, it is something that they're stigmatized or they feel like there's a sense of shame. Um, for people who don't necessarily have access to mental health resources or to therapy, I should say, what are some mental health resources that maybe you can recommend or talk about? 
Absolutely, and that's a really good question uh, because it's unfortunate that we live in a world where it is priority, yet it is not um, treated like priority uh, mm -hmm. because it's still expensive to access these things. You know, you can start with, um, you know, uh, you know, your university, your school, um, uh, online resources. That's a, okay. I'm sorry to stop you there, but for any students who are listening and they live in uh, North America, in North America, um, or even in Europe, chances are that there are going to be accessible uh, resources and mental health resources on, on your campus. Absolutely, there there is a high chance. Um, you know, you can start there. I personally um, uh, think that books is a great uh, yeah. uh, place to go. Um, you know, and if you don't like reading books, make yourself like reading books. It's, I okay, couldn't just have finish said a book. it better. Yo, read. <laughs> read those books. Start Absolutely. off with Power of Now and what's the other one? Loving What Is. Loving What There's Is. There's more recommendations that I have. Um, uh, I have a whole list that I can share with you guys uh, if you like. But, but yeah, like honestly, just reading books. It doesn't have to be these two books. Just go to, to the uh, self-development mm -hmm. section of your Audible or the bookstore and get uh, a self... Uh, bettering book we talked about uh, your journey from from vine to youtube to taking a break and now you're back on tiktok do you remember what was your first tiktok or no yes i do remember what was my first tiktok obviously was it posted on your platform or it is still on my tiktok <laughs> really <laughs> it what wasn't was it? even on my face dude what was your first tiktok when was it yeah what was it oh it was it, there was a sound on tiktok yeah. of a of a kid crying yeah um, and so what I did was I used that sound and I, and I was doing Zetu Zathar. Yeah. Um, for people who don't know what Zetu Zathar is, oregano, right? Oregano? It's not oregano. Not oregano. Uh, Zathar is... So I think it's Zathar. It's thyme, thyme, thyme. Thyme? I was so like, it's thyme. just Zathar. <laughs> yeah, Zathar is thyme. Thyme and olive oil yeah. um, on pita bread, you know, and making a sandwich, crying. So the caption was, when your mom says there's food at home. Mm. So he's making Zetu Zatar. She said, she said there's food at home. So he's crying. That sound is like, <laughs> and, and he's like doing Zetu Zatar, yeah. a sandwich. And then the caption is, when your mom says there's food at home. When your Arab mom says when there's your food. your Arab mom. So you started with that Arab content. That was basically the first one. And it did really well. Yeah. I was going to ask you, what was the first video that was kind of like defined safe? Like the vi the most viral one. Oh, the first viral one was with me and my siblings. Yeah. Um, so my three brothers and sister. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, it was a sound, I don't know from which movie. I'm really bad with names and stuff like that. I don't, my memory is, my memory is great. I'm so gonna say that. Fact check uh, <laughs> after. No, but it's, it's a sound where um, my sister walks in yeah. uh, from the door and then she comes in like running and we're all sitting on the couch and she's like, something happened. Um, don't ask me what, what it is uh, or what, or whatever, but I need you guys, uh, you guys' help. And then the camera switches to all of us sitting, four boys, yeah. like her, her brothers. And then we take our keys out. We're like, so which car are we going to take? Because we're like, who's messing with our sister? Damn, and now blew up because people are like, you know, it's a big family and we're all like um, protecting our sister. People uh, love that. And that one blew up. That was the first one. Tell me a little more about that. How big is your family for people who don't know? Um, we're seven kids, uh, two girls and five boys. Mashallah. And how would you describe your role in the family? My role in the family. Oh, I was the rebel. Mr. Rebel. The rebel and the middle child. Even though- That's why you were the rebel. There's three middle child in my, <laughs> in my family, but I was like the rebel, the middle child, the one that, I was the one that spoke up. Um, I'm not saying you should speak up uh, or disrespect your parents, but, but growing yeah, up- Every was, parent's gonna be like making their kids watch this. <laughs> yeah, they should. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's like safe says read books, yeah. safe says don't, <laughs> don't uh, speak up. Yeah. But no, no, speak up. <laughs> but I was, I, I, the way I spoke up was a little aggressive at times. Obviously, I don't, I'm not proud of that, but I am proud that I speak up. So I was the, 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 the kid that like, whenever they would say something, I'd be like, but wait. Yeah. No, 
It doesn't have to be that way. Like they would say something like about marriage or values or morals or things like that, that you should be this way because of that. I'm like, no, you don't need to be that way. Mm -hmm. So I was the guy that like spoke up and my other siblings would just like, be like, yeah. You were challenging the status quo. That's what you were doing. Exactly. Whenever I heard something that to me did not work, Mm -hmm. I'd question it and I'd be like, wait, no, hold on. Let's talk about this. And that like, um, it got, it got me into a lot of arguments. Let's just say that with my parents. And I find that very cool because like we're grown up, especially if you come from an Arab household, like you need to just follow, like be obedient. And it's something that we emphasize a lot. So for us to be like, yo, maybe this is not uh, the right thing, or this is something that should be challenged. It takes up a lot of courage, my man. Exactly. But now I would say my role is, uh, you know, uh, just, I think we're all the same. Me and my brothers, like we don't yeah. have uh, differences, but uh, I am the most like socially out there, I guess. So, and uh, and you still currently live with your parents and your family, right? I currently still live um, in my parents' house. It's There's the, no shame in that, especially if you're yeah. Arab. I was gonna say, it's like Arab, that is a very general expectation. Exactly, plus where am I gonna move out to? Uh, a single bedroom apartment and live on my on my own? Yeah. No, I'd rather be with my family. Like it's actually, my family is fun. I like them. They're They're not bad roommates, to be honest, so. I know for a fact my mom is gonna see this part and she's like, Look, Safe lives with this family. <laughs> I am, uh, moms, moms tend to like me uh, in general. Like yeah. they, they like, uh, growing up, moms like always like uh, vibed with me, I guess. So what do you think that is? There, let your kids listen to this, I guess. <laughs> what do you think that is? What do you think? Because I do see that, you know, you have a lot of family friendly content. A lot of parents love and appreciate you. I, it's because I, I, I don't know, I feel like not just moms i connect with anybody no matter what their status is um facts or whatever uh so just be me being able to connect and relate to people is what they like i guess i put myself in their shoes and i know what to say that would make them mm. happy you're some people might not know this but safe is one of the best entrepreneurs i've had a chance to interact with oh thank you my man and i've seen safe uh, you know, when you were on, on your break and you were in sales. And I just want to know a little more about kind of like your journey with business and business development and how that now comes into your life as a content creator. Yes, uh, absolutely. So um, not just uh, sales experience. I also went to McMaster University for business, um, although I don't really think that was the most important investment of my life. Uh, but it did kind of help. But really, the the... The, the main thing that I think um, a very important, not very important, something that really helped me today is my sales experience. And that is because with my sales experience, I was able to, I was emailing uh, clients, I was selling stuff, like I was selling tech, I was in an IT company. And um, I was going in, in these meetings and learning how to like talk to people and convince them um, of something or solve a solution for them and make it about them and stuff like that. I learned a lot from my sales experience that I was able to translate with my uh, current um, uh, occupation, if you may say, uh, to be able to um, talk to brands and um, make deals that would make me, you know, you need to be able to become, um, like it needs to, what you'd love to do needs to become your source of income so you can do it all the time. Like that's very important. Um, so I was able to uh, translate whatever I learned from my sales experience to be able to speak to brands and make these deals with them and stuff like that. And this is a cool thing about like 2022 because now creator equals founder. And you have, you know, your own, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, you have your own company. And, uh, and what I appreciate about everything you're doing is you are treating it as growing a media business. And I think that's so cool. And I think that's a very you know, current of the times. Absolutely, like I I did it from the beginning uh, where I treated it like that. Like I I treated it like a business um, uh, and you need to do that, right? Because if you wanna scale, if you wanna be be able to do this uh, Mm -hmm. for a longer time, you gotta think about these business things, right? Um, And uh, 
I think everybody should take that into consideration. Uh, and the sooner you can mm-hmm. understand that, uh, the better. What's one piece of advice for anyone who wants to become, who is a content creator and wants to make that their full-time thing? Um, never uh, remove the element of fun from Mm -hmm. what you're doing and don't forget why you're doing it because as soon as you start uh, treating it too much like a business or like, um, or like you're just looking after like, um, you know, posts that will generate income for you or whatnot, it will show in your body language and your face and it will start becoming ungenuine and then therefore the numbers will translate to becoming less and then therefore you won't be able to make these deals and make the, that kind of income so don't forget why you're doing it Starting enjoy it is so always important. exactly yeah and remind yourself sometimes i always remind my uh, i have to remind myself like safe why am i doing this because i love it because it's fun because this is great because what, what, yeah. what i was meant to do you know you got to remind yourself and I will say this, like I've seen you over the years and Safe has always had a good time. Like I've always seen him have, a, have fun doing what he does. And I think that's, re- is reflective of exactly what you're saying and your content as well. So, yo, listen to this guy, have fun and uh, have fun. And what was the other one? And remind yourself why you're doing this. And why, and start yeah. with why. Yeah, 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 the why. The why. The why. So last segment, we like to end off with just a few questions, all right? So the first question I got for you, is what is something people seem to misunderstand about you? They call me the TikToker or the guy on TikTok on the streets. Is that, mis- I have a name. <laughs> you have a name. Okay, so you're not just, <laughs> you know, a, a piece of TikTok. So exactly, you're, you're I'm safe not just show-off. a TikToker, I'm safe show off. I love it. How would your parents describe what you do for a living? <laughs> <laughs> um, I think they're, they're getting it now. They're understanding it. Um, they would, Probably describe it as a, they call it. They call me a content creator. You know, makes videos, um, and uh, that's how he makes his money. He makes videos. That's how they describe it. He makes videos. He makes videos. Yeah, I love it. I love it. Okay, so if you can turn back the time and talk to your eighteen-year-old self, what would you tell them? <sighs> um, I would tell them to go for it and. Uh, read, Reading. read books. Reading is <laughs> literally. Huge. I would tell my eighteen-year-old self read books, um, and then I would also tell him to, uh, you know, go for whatever you want to go for. Like, just do it. Reading and just going for it. I think yeah. those are two very important themes of this uh, conversation as well. And what is something you wish people talked more about? Um. Anxiety, depression, bullying, and reading books. I love it. <laughs> okay, last question. Tell me. What song right now is on repeat for you? Oh my God. Do you have another question? I don't really have any. You don't? Okay. Question. Make me laugh. Why can't dinosaurs clap? Why can't they clap? Because they're dead. That's so sad. <laughs> it's kind of dark. <laughs> Okay, I love it. Uh, what's actually, yo, make me cringe. No, I'm not gonna They're do not that. Gonna make me <laughs> That's your job. That's my job. <laughs> I genuinely can't stress enough how much we enjoyed this conversation. There's so many important lessons in just this one hour. It was, we talked about mental health. We talked about growing from depression and anxiety. We talked about content creation, how to turn that into a business. We talked about being authentic and vulnerable. and. And of course, we talked about the importance of reading books and using that to teach you. And I can't thank you enough for being here, for being present. And uh, we'll talk probably in in a couple of minutes as well. Literally, (laughs) we'll we'll hang out tonight. (laughs) Yeah, my bad. Before we wrap up, I'm gonna give it to Safe for one more time. Safe, what message you got for the audience? A message? Hi, my name is Safe Shawaf. Read books, do what you love to do and listen to this podcast on all streaming platforms.